Hey everyone, Spicy Toast Gaming here. I hope you're having a great day and I hope this video can make it a little bit better. Today will be a bit different than the normal videos I do. This is going to be another one of those discussion videos where I will be showing stuff on screen, but in general it's going to be more of like a kind of podcast episode where I'm just talking to you, discussing stuff about the game. And so if you want to put this on in the background while you're doing something else, this would be the perfect type of video for that. Today we're going to be talking about the three new champions. So we have the Elder Dragon right here, we have Morgana down here, and Mordekaiser. Makes sense they're right next to each other. Now I will be releasing in-depth guides very shortly on these champions. I believe the Morgana guide is going to come out either tomorrow or the day after. And I'll be putting a lot more details on how to play the champions and final rankings for tier lists and stuff like that in those videos. This is going to be a little bit more of a broad discussion of what I think about the champions and kind of going over their different strengths and weaknesses. Let's start off with what I think about each champion or the general broad strokes of what makes them good. For one, I like that Mordekaiser and Morgana are both dual region champions. That is very nice, especially for those players that are just starting out, since when you're first starting the game, it's really important to get a champion that is good for every region so that you can complete all of the quests. And so dual region champions make it a little bit easier so you can just invest in one champion and let them work for multiple regions is quite nice. Now, unfortunately, that's not the same for Elder Dragon since he is a Runeterra champion. Also, another thing that I really like, it's how much power each one of these champions is getting from their level ups and not quite as much their star powers. Now their star powers are still quite impactful, but for a lot of these champions, you get so many really good upgrades from your starting deck. And even speaking of the starting decks, the ones we have here are very well done. Now obviously they're not perfect, that you still wanna be able to potentially get some upgrades throughout your run, but all of them work out quite well, and they definitely put some focus into the different upgrades you're getting because they work out quite well. Like the Dark Binding here, this is Morgana's champion spell. Always having that in your starting deck is really good. And then the fact you get that Invoke, this is surprisingly strong. Morgana can struggle with running out of cards. So being able to just put on Grand General's Counter Plan so you have this to play every round, and then when you play this, you also get another card is really, really good. Mordekaiser, I think, probably has the best starting deck out of the three of them. We have some very solid units here, and they do actually play quite well into your star powers, and also Mordekaiser himself, because you want to be killing units that have at least five power. Most of your units already have that, but they might get something like the Pickaxe right here, where it goes to three power. When this dies and gets revived, it gets two extra power from your star powers, and so it then hits that five power threshold, so now it's gonna count as two for Mordekaiser's level up condition. So I think all the starting decks were really well done. Now I know some people have issues with the Elder Dragon one, and I agree with some of those, especially like this dragon right here, would have been much better to get one of the new dragons that actually released with Elder Dragon. But I think the Stalking Broodmother is actually very good to have, and then the cards you're getting earlier, like the Ruby-Eyed Conjurer is just fine, it's not bad. But the fact that we have like three cards that help our ramp, like Blue Sentinel gives us the Crest of Insight, so extra mana next round. The Sharp Sight gives us a, another empty mana gem. And then the Dragon Worshipper gives us an extra mana gem next round, as well as the Crystal Carrier. So the fact that like for Elder Dragon, we have three ways to ramp up is crazy. And so many of these upgrades are from leveling up your champion and not just by getting the star powers. So I think that's another thing they did really good with these champions is put so much power of their kit into just their level ups and their starting deck. That way, if you're someone that you can't really invest a lot of shards, especially in three star in your champions, if you just take the time to level them up, you're getting a massive amount of power from that and not actually relying on your third star power to make your champion actually playable. So that is another great thing. Also, because these starting decks are so good, I think all three of these champions are going to be great additions to the monthly challenges. In the monthly challenges, you really have to lean heavily on your starting deck because you don't have really time to get a lot of upgrades throughout the course of the adventure. So the fact that all these champions actually have good starting decks means you don't have to rely on those upgrades as much. Another one of the great positives I think that they did for this set of champions is all of these champions are pretty slow, but even with that, they're still quite strong. So for a lot of the other slower champions, like 
Orn or Nasus down here, they're slow, and because of how slow they are, they're weak. But that's not really the case for these champions. All three of them are generally slower on average. Yes, Elder Dragon and Mordekaiser can sometimes stomp and win pretty quickly, but against higher difficulty adventures, that doesn't really happen. But even though all of them can be quite slow, they're still so powerful. And so if you finally want to be able to play a ramp style champion, they've actually added three that all fit that kind of niche very, very well, even though they all play very differently. For so long, it was the cheaper your champion is, the better they are. And so all the S tier champions were like Jax or Diana up here, or even Teemo. It was just all the champions you play in the first round in most situations, and that's what made your champion so strong. You just had to go full aggro, rush the enemy down super fast. But for the most part, that's not really the case here. Like, Morgana, she can really struggle to actually end the game, but she doesn't struggle to actually win the game you still have so much control that you're really never getting outscaled because the enemy can just never play their cards. With Morgana, I've pretty much never struggled to control the board, even against some champions that kind of counter you, such as like Ezreal. Morgana to me seems pretty crazy powerful and like a champion you could take into the hardest monthly challenges and even the most aggressive ones possible and you're still gonna do fine just because of the crazy amount of control that you have as a champion. That being said, her games do go on quite long. She's definitely not closing out games quickly. But yeah, for the longest time, we just had champions where the longer you took, the worse you were. And that's really starting to change. They've actually done a great job at adding slower champions that just because they're slow doesn't mean they're weak. And that's actually a big change for Path of Champions because that's been the case for a very long time. Also, one thing I really like that they did, specifically with Mordekaiser, is he is incredibly strong, but he actually does have some weaknesses. For some champions, you just feel like you're absolutely unstoppable. With Mordekaiser, you actually need to be a little bit careful because if you go up against champions that have a lot of overwhelm units, that's going to be a pretty big counter to you because all of your units being revived with that one health from Deathless, you really struggle to reduce the damage you take from overwhelm. Or if you go up against champions that just have crazy amounts of removal, such as Ezreal, you normally aren't going to be able to survive when the enemy is casting three removal spells on one target. So even though I think Mordekaiser is quite crazy and very powerful, it is interesting how there are going to be certain cases where you're just not going to want to pick him. And I kind of like that trade-off of champions having their own strengths and weaknesses. And for most champions, it's not quite as apparent. Normally a champion is just all strengths with barely any weaknesses, or there's just a lot of weaknesses with not many redeeming qualities. Mordekaiser, I think, is a good mix of both, especially with me focusing more and more on the monthly challenges and trying to figure out how new champions can fit into the existing roster and go up against some of the existing modifiers. I think Mordekaiser will be really fun there because I think there's many challenges where he'll just be absolutely unstoppable, but then against certain other ones, you're just definitely not going to want to pick him. And so I know there are some people that are upset with his shortcomings, but I actually think it is good design. Because I think just having a champion that can stomp absolutely everything can tend to make the game less fun. There should be situations where you want to pick one champion over another champion and not just be like, oh, I'm always going to pick this one champion in all situations. Now, I've been very happy with both Morgana and Mordekaiser. Elder Dragon to me is kind of a bit more of a meme. Now, I do need to play him a bit more, but I haven't been really enjoying his playstyle too much. Like, yes, it can be fun to drop a very expensive card very early and then just roll over your opponent like that, but I find he's very simplistic. I normally like a little bit more depth to my units, where here it's just drop big unit, use big unit to steamroll the enemy. And so normally when I've been playing him, it's just been kind of boring, actually. And I also don't feel like I have that many options. Like the game plan is ramp and then use big unit to overwhelm the enemy. Like in our starting deck, we have one combat trick and we have one removal spell. But I just often feel when the enemy does something, I don't have that many options to deal with it. And that to me feels pretty bad. I like having champions where you have many different solutions to deal with a problem that the opponent gives you. And I just feel that lacking in Elder Dragon, which makes him less enjoyable to me. But in my opinion, he is a bit more of a meme champion that they kind of just added more for fun. And I think he fits that role pretty well. But because of that, I feel like he just 
lacks a lot of the complexity and depth that you can get from most other champions. Overall though, I think all three of these are great additions to our overall roster of champions, and I think it really bodes well for the future of Path of Champions, because for one, none of these champions are broken as in bugged. Like yes, there's a deathless item that's bugged, but that's not really directly part of Mordekaiser or his units. Like all of his deathless from his units or that he generates from his indestructible, that's all working. So as far as patches go, this has been relatively bug-free, at least compared to most others. So well done, Riot. Also, all these champions to me are very interesting and different to play than any other champion. And for the most part, quite fun, which I think is the most important part of a champion when they're added is, is this fulfilling a role or giving us a different play style that we can't really get anywhere else? And while yes, there's other control decks, none of them control the same way Morgana does. And while there's other decks that are about killing your own units, none of them have the same mechanic as Mordekaiser. And then there's not really anything that's similar to Elder Dragon. Probably kind of Aurelian Soul, as they're both somewhat meme decks. But all three of the champions play very different. They're fulfilling a different niche for people. And it's really showing that Riot is taking the time to make good champions, but not necessarily overpowered ones. It also shows that they can actually make one good starting decks, because I think all three of these starting decks are actually well crafted and nothing like the monstrosity we got with Nasus. All the decks actually make sense, especially with the upgrades we get from the champion level ups. To be honest, these are some of the best starting decks we've actually seen in the entire game. I'd say all three of these were probably in the top 10. So that's awesome that Riot actually seems like they're putting a lot of thought and effort into these starting decks, but also they've finally been able to make good ramp decks. Volibear was a little bit of a test case when he was added because he was kind of the first ramp style deck that was still able to be quite powerful. And he actually was able to end games faster than any of the other people he was released with, which was quite humorous. But all three of these champions that released are all slow, but I think all of them are gonna end up being B tier or higher. I will say there is a little bit of a caveat to that though, in that both Mordekaiser and Elder Dragon Kind of the best relics to run on them are two epics, and these are currently the two epics you can actually buy with real money. Now you can still get the Disciple of Shadows from Golden Reliquary, so it's not like you can only buy it with real money. And I feel like some of these champions, especially Mordekaiser, were made so much with this relic in mind that that is why they decided to make it available to purchase, which kind of mixed feelings on. On the one side, I do want the game to make money because the content we're getting is kind of better than we've ever gotten before. Like I think this patch was probably bigger than any previous patch we've had. And we know that we're getting a new region soon, potentially next patch. So we're getting massive amounts of content and content costs money. And so if we're not directly supporting the game, the game won't be able to keep producing that content. So that's why it's a little bit of a toss up of, I want them to have more ways they can monetize the game, but releasing some champions that are kind of made to work with specific epic relics isn't as good, especially when those are the only epic relics that are available for direct purchase. Like I'm really enjoying my Mordekaiser, but since 30, I haven't taken these two relics off yet. I'm going to have to play some games with just rare relics and I think that's probably gonna feel pretty bad. Like epic relics should be epic, they should really help out your champion, but your champion should still work without the epic relic. They shouldn't be a crutch that the champion has to have and not really be able to function without it. So it does seem a little bad that they added these epic relics right before releasing more champions that directly needed them to really be good. Overall though, I think this patch was a giant W for Riot. So much content added to the game. I really look forward to diving deep into all of the epic relics and how they've been adjusted. I think all three of these champions are great additions to the game. I really look forward to testing them out in the next set of monthly challenges. And I think the future is looking pretty bright for Path of Champions. Thank you for listening to me as I kind of rambled on on these different champions. I wanted to have a video where I could just talk about them a little bit more and a bit more casually than I'm going to do in the upcoming guides. So thank you for listening. If you appreciate all the work I do for Path of Champions, definitely like and subscribe. I hope you all have a great day and a great weekend.